Thank you, Dr. Bahn, for giving me the opportunity to present this um, PowerPoint. Um, uh, instead of my wife, unfortunately, my wife um, was prevented to come here for familiar reasons, family reasons. So, but uh, I hope I can convey some of the ideas uh, which are behind her creation, which is called the, the X Lab. Okay, so um, the idea is to teach science in a research like environment quite. Uh, similar to what I saw this morning here in the secondary school program, you know, to provide opportunities for uh, high school students to get familiar with scientific methods and to, uh, to, uh, to um, do some experiments themselves in order to find out whether they like this kind of idea. Of course, is, uh, the long-term goal is to inspire young people to take up careers in science. Not to push for science, but to let them get the experience whether science is something uh, they want to engage with, you know, and of course some, some students find out that it's not what they like, so they can study something else. But should be kind of support in helping to make the right decision uh, what to do after finishing high school um, what kind of subjects uh, to um, uh, take on. Now here I have a presentation, a, a, a movie for about five minutes, which more or less already tells the essence of what XLab, how XLab is working. So I hope this works. Yes. So just, I'm just watching. XLab takes science education in a whole new direction. The experimental laboratory on the campus of the University of Göttingen bridges the gap between school and university. Its courses are aimed at young people from all over the world. By doing hands-on experiments, they develop a deeper understanding of science. I like the fact that we do a lot of experiments in a quite a short time because the experiments that we're doing here this week in this course this amounts to a one semester's worth of experiments at our school. The S1 Genetics Lab presents a good example of XLab's high-tech equipment. Students in the Molecular Biology course work in a real laboratory setting. An opportunity that is eagerly welcomed. I have like three months vacation so I can go to the beach, I can spend time with my friends and I can also go to this camp so Oh, why don't you go? XLab organizes international science camps every year. Three weeks of physics, chemistry, and biology courses from which the students can freely choose. Universities, colleges, elite schools, and talent development programs send their students to stay at XLab for one or more weeks. XLab thus prepares the young elites from around the world for a scientific career learning how to work in a team and uh, uh, learning how to work in a lab for a whole day, how to design an experiment, how to prove a hypothesis. Uh, this is very, very important. And for most of the students, it was an important step when they applied for university later on. The students learn the basic techniques of research in all fields, such as transferring DNA into plant cells using a gene gun, as we see here. The priority is always understanding through active participation. Instead of learning the formulas, we are just learning the um, basic, basic things and we can use our knowledge by conducting some experiments, so it is very useful. In neurobiology, tasks include recording signals from nerve cells. The students work with the exact same instruments as used in real research laboratories. One important lesson they learn is that scientific experiments don't always succeed on the first go. One needs tenacity and perseverance to be a scientist. XLab is therefore a perfect place for the students to discover which field they find the most fun and motivating to study. Put it down to a minus 50, please. Withholding current? No? Withholding current? I think you learn best if you do it yourself. So if you really touch the stuff, get it into your hand and really try to figure out the problem by doing it. And therefore I can really say 
if I would have had the possibility to, uh, to visit a laboratory like this when I was a student, I would have enjoyed it hugely, and I think that's the biggest invitation I can say. The XLab courses include visits to partner research institutes and outdoor excursions. These ecology students are out on a lake to study the ecosystem. Very precise. It measures 400 to 700 nanometers wavelength. Exactly that wavelength range that plants can use. Like real researchers, the students work at real research sites, say in a forest or at a lake or river. They learn that ecology is less about romantic ideals of nature and more about understanding all the interactions in the biotope. Back at the X-Lab, they return straight to the bench to analyze their collected samples. The chemistry courses delve into topics such as reaction kinetics, dye stuff chemistry, and electrochemistry. The students isolate antibiotics and synthesize medicines such as aspirin. More than 150,000 students have worked in the laboratories of XLab since its founding in 1999. In the physics courses, students are introduced to laser physics, for example, and gain an understanding of radioactive phenomena. The course level at XLab is always adapted to the current group. In fact, it is not only school students who learn at XLab, but also teachers. Both target groups deepen their knowledge of theoretical physics through practice. In this advanced learning course specifically for teachers, the latest insights in elementary particle physics are presented. For example, what implications do the experiments at CERN have for the standard model? XLab thus gives teachers the chance to continue learning in courses tailored specifically to their needs and to gain new stimuli for their own classes. Scientists of the university, nearby Max Planck Institutes and other research institutes, cooperate with XLab to bring teachers up to date with the latest research. Aside from science and lab work, the teacher and student courses offer no shortage of social activities. It is the perfect occasion for participants to make acquaintances with like-minded people from around the world. We have a lot of opportunities. We have excursions, we go somewhere together, for example. There are people from all over the world, from China, Ukraine, like from Spain. Oh my God! Oh my God. We heartily invite you to visit the XLab in Göttingen. Okay, well, you more or less got the message. You heard most of uh, what I'm going to show in a little bit more detail in the next few slides. The first question is, where is XLab? It is in Göttingen, a small town in the middle of Germany. And the way the map is drawn here, also very much in the middle of Europe. It's an old town with a medieval kind of core. Let me see whether I can. So this, this is the old part of the city, which at some time was surrounded by a wall. And uh, so in the 19th and 20th century, the city grew. And uh, um, uh, also the university, which originally was located in the very center of town, moved out into the surroundings. And there, in the middle of the um, new science campus, is the X-Lab, this colorful building, which you saw already a few times in between. And uh, the X-Lab was designed to cooperate with all these different institutes, 
from the university, from the Max Planck Institute for Biophysical Chemistry, which is my institute where I did my research, you know. Uh, there is uh, more uh, Max Planck Institutes. There are, is also an institute which is called the German Primate Center, concentrating on work with non-human primates, apes, uh, monkeys, you know. And the cooperation with the local research institutes is supposed to secure, to guarantee that experiments and topics, experiments done and topics offered, uh, discussed in the XLAB are actually up to date, the cutting edge of research. Okay, so this is more or less the outline. First a few slides about the idea, the concept, then about the programs, then about special efforts to uh, 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 convey the international spirit of research. I mean, research is international. We all, no matter whether we are in Germany, Hungary or the United States, have the common task of finding out the laws of nature, you know, to explore um, uh, the world uh, um, around us. Um, then <clears throat> there are a few slides about XLAB alumni efforts to uh, keep contact with previous uh, students in XLAB and to also bring them together uh, um, uh, every few years uh, to exchange their ideas and uh, to discuss what the experiences they had uh, um, uh, been able to uh, accumulate in the meantime. Okay, so uh, the mission bridging the gap between high school and university, um, uh, in particular with hands-on experience. And the principles are professionalism, to really work in a research-like manner, you know, to do this in an interdisciplinary context, uh, to convey the idea that actually biology is a, or modern biology is a discipline which by necessity uh, has to bring together all the natural sciences, physics, chemistry, um, uh, neuroscience, computer science, to understand uh, complex phenomena in biology. And as I mentioned already, uh, to uh, emphasize that this is an international effort. Okay. Um, the programs, what does XLAB offer? It offers courses for high school students from Germany and all over Europe. Um, uh, these are courses in the sense that students individually on certain occasions or groups of students with their teachers can come to XLAB for a day, for a few days, for a week and do a certain type of experiments. Then there are these intensive uh, courses for students from abroad for instance, there is quite often coming uh, a group of students, medical students from Spain, who spent two weeks in Göttingen to do experiments in anatomy, for instance, very similar to what I saw this morning. Um, uh, uh, and they come because in medical education in Spain, there are no practical, there is no practical work. Uh, um, Spanish medical students learn only from textbook, their anatomy, their, 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 their physiology and so on. And so it's a welcome opportunity for some universities to send groups of students for such intensive uh, uh, courses to XLAB. Then, as already mentioned in the movie, there are teacher training courses, usually on Saturday, bring to, uh, together groups of 20, 30 teachers who apply individually for these courses, you know. And then there are the international science camps. International science camps are the, uh, have been shown in this movie, uh, or most of the, the, the um, passages in the movie were actually uh, 
recordings from the international science camps. I will come back to that in detail. So you saw the building from the outside. Um, each floor is organized in a way like this. There is always combinations of uh, uh, seminar rooms and lab spaces so that there can be intensive interaction, switching between lab to experiments and uh, uh, discussing experiments and uh, getting instructions on the basics of the experiment. And uh, so this is uh, again repeated up here, you know, and then some additional rooms. And each floor this way is dedicated to one discipline. So green, this one would be for, for biology. Up there, I think, well, this is maybe physics, I don't <laughs> know. Uh, uh, so there are, anyway, fl floors for biology, physics, chemistry, and a special floor for neurobiology. Okay. So the courses or experiments that can be performed uh, in the different disciplines are listed here. Uh, laser, atomic physics, optics, astrophysics. Um, um, for instance, in laser physics, uh, students study the properties of lasers by actually um, uh, working with, with, with uh, experimental lasers, not lasers which you buy as a package, which, which uh, uh, like a black box, but uh, lasers of a kind which you can learn to understand the principles of, uh, of, of lasers. Um, chemistry, uh, the different sections, I mean, analytical chemistry, biochemistry, um, organic chemistry, uh, synthesizing compounds like um, uh, 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 well, uh, different compounds. Okay, um, that just shows some pictures of students uh, studying chemistry. You know, then biology, ranging from anatomy on um, dissecting organs from pig, like. I saw this morning uh, dissecting pig heart, uh, or down to plant physiology, neurobiology, uh, and ecology. Here students are doing uh, electrophoresis. Uh, students uh, uh, working on the on, on the pig heart. Um, molecular biology of plants, studying gene expression in uh, uh, plant cells, then ecology. Um, you saw some movies about ecology already uh, before. Now here is an example from forest ecology. There is a department of forestry at the University of Got Göttingen who operate an experimental station in a nearby forest. So the students go there and take samples from soil, samples from different parts uh, of, of, uh, uh, of the trees and so on. And uh, here once more a picture from an excursion to uh, one of the nearby, nearby lakes. Um, yeah, and finally neurobiology, where students do experiments with Xenopus oocytes. Xenopus oocytes are a system uh, which was uh, uh, used um, as one of the first systems to express foreign genes in a cell. So what you can do is you can inject into this oocyte, which is a kind of spherical object of almost one millimeter diameter, you can inject uh, uh, RNA into this uh, oocyte, and the oocyte will synthesize the protein uh, which the um, RNA codes for. And this way you can, uh, for instance, um, uh, express uh, voltage-dependent sodium channels uh, uh, in the oocyte membrane, and you can make the oocyte membrane electrically excitable, like a neuron. These are experiments 
I think uh, with the with the setup where you do electrophysiological recordings from either leech or uh, snail, here is the equipment that you use for this electrophysiological recordings. Uh, okay, and this uh, carries me over to XLab International, to the efforts of the international scheme. Um, and first of all, there is this <coughs> international science camp, a three-week program where students come from many parts of the world, from many countries, maximum three or four um, uh, uh, students from one country to avoid that they form groups among themselves in their own language, you know. And each student selects for, I mean, this was a plan, I think, uh, last year or, or in 2017. Each student selects for the first week one of these three courses, uh, anatomy or laser physics or organ, uh, organic chemistry, uh, to spend one week uh, on these subjects. For the second week, a given student selects one of these, these three, and for the third week, then one of these three. And so after three weeks, uh, they are, have really obtained a lot of experience, uh, not only doing their own experiments, but talking to uh, other participants about uh, the other experiments which other, other students do and what the problems are. So these are the various nations where students came from, from so far from 48 different countries, you know, 730 participants over these last uh, 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 10 to 12 years, you know, and as I mentioned already, students stay together for the whole three to four weeks, you know. So this is uh, the happy group on the last day um, before, before everybody um, 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 uh, separates again and goes back to their home country. Um, this, this is a, a, a list of, not of um, uh, science camp tile participants, uh, science camp participants, but uh, a list of students coming from, from as groups uh, from different countries, you know, and there are, for instance, the Netherlands, who regularly each year uh, send groups of students for a week or two uh, to spend as a, now as a group, not as an international group, but as a, as a group from Netherlands uh, at the X-Lab. That's a statistics of enrollments, you know, it started in 1999, um, um, uh, initially, there were lots of students from our own state, but of course, uh, they got used to it. Uh, but uh, uh, the, the same way as the, the nearby students decreased in numbers, the students from further German states, from further away, increased, you know, and particularly also students from abroad became more and more. In total, there were, uh, uh, in the end, since about 2003, each, each year about 12,000 student days. So in this statistics, each student counts as many entries as uh, he or she uh, stays days at XLab. Uh, so XLab came to a kind of upper limit because it's more or less uh, booked out at this level, uh, it, it cannot further grow without, say, ex expansion. Um, I mentioned already the XLab alumni, alumni, the effort to keep track of the students, uh, to encourage uh, their meeting late, later on, uh, encourage uh, uh, them keeping up with uh, uh, contacts, you know. So this was the alumni meeting in 2009, when some students from the very early uh, years came together uh, uh, in a small symposium, at least those students who actually 
uh, went on a career in science uh, and they uh, uh, discussed with each other what their research experience was uh, in the years since they spent time together in a uh, science camp. Um, one example, a student from India who uh, attended the International Science Camp in 2005. He went back to the University of uh, uh, Delhi to uh, initiate his studies. Then he was able to switch over into Oxford, um, uh, did some postdoc in the United Kingdom, then in the EMBL in Heidelberg, and today he is a su successful researcher in Cambridge, um, uh, 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 yes, uh, in the UK. Um, that's just an example of uh, the presentations by XLAB alumni in one of these symposia in, in 2017. Um, you can see very interdisciplinary, in fact, so interdisciplinary that they sometimes have problems in uh, uh, discussing their, their, the details of uh, their research. You know. um, another example of an alumni, uh, Marina Radulaski from Serbia. She ended up in Stanford University um, after having spent time in in, 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 in Vienna, in Germany, um, uh, and, and, uh, yeah. um, that's just a picture from the Alumni Symposium in 2017, um, and here listed the kind of goals to stay in contact, to form long-lasting friend friendships, uh, to uh, convey the experience that research is kind of the scientific community is type of a family which is spread all over the world and uh, to demonstrate that experience at XLAB may be a kind of a jumping board, board to um, uh, initiate international uh, contacts and so on. One second, I think this was already. So, what is the vision? Well, uh, as I said, the, the, the capacity is limited uh, present day, so my wife always has visions for expansion, and these are kind of ideas about a new building which um, um, will be erected nearby, very nearby the uh, existing buildings, which uh, has housing for the students and has facilities for interaction, uh, very much probably like you have just heard about the plans here in Seged. Um, well, um, of course, um, XLAB Göttingen shouldn't be alone, uh, science being international. Of course, the hope is that sometime in the, in the future there will be institutions of a similar nature where exchange can happen um, already on the high school and student lab as it is, of course, a practice uh, then uh, in research. Okay, that's it. Thank you. I'm, you are welcome to ask questions. Mm -hmm.